Gobble, gobble. Hi there, today you are going to come along with me to Toll Booth Antiques, which is located in Columbia, Pennsylvania. Jocelyn and I, Crazy Lamp Lady, we were meeting to exchange some boxes and I got to Toll Booth before her and my schedule was a little tight with homeschooling and getting my packing out that I felt that I was just going to meet Jocelyn, throw the boxes at her and go on my way. But I got there early, luckily, and I was able to go down and see a booth called Joanny's Antiques. And it is actually a friend of a friend's booth. And so we had been there, Jocelyn and I had been to her booth before, but now I thought it was kind of a little bit cooler because I knew whose booth it actually was. So you will see a majority of her booth and also some new items while I was walking around Tollbooth Antiques. And then towards the end of the video, I am sharing some auction lots that I won on an online auction, and the auction was located an hour away in Maryland. So I hope you enjoy this video. When I first walked in, they had this little Mexico pottery donkey, and I was kind of not in the mindset, I'm not going to buy anything. And looking back at this video, I probably should have picked that up. That was super duper cute. And I believe it's an also in the same booth. They had these planters. There was a cute night light. This is an Aladdin night light of a little girl. Isn't that sweet? And they also had this very large Jim Shore cow. I think it was a cookie jar. And here was another night light. This one was a uh, rubbery material. Moving into another booth, there was this Jim Shore three piece set and they wanted $29 for that. And they also had these ginormous Inesco salt and pepper shakers. They're huge, look how big they are. They were $10. I didn't know if the whole thing would cover carry or hold salt and pepper they just seemed that's an awful lot of salt and pepper these are global they have these as global snow kids i know that sometimes the one in the blue hat is called a who's it i'm going to have a current listing of how much they sell for they wanted 12 dollars for the pair And then near the couple was this, what I believe is a Van Telligen salt and pepper shaker. It is missing the other piece. And they had some cups. These were marked made in Japan. I thought they were a nice, cute design on them. This is in a booth that has a lot of mid-century modern items. They had, a, uh, I think, three different sets of these Lucite grapes. If I remember correctly, people used to put these together themselves. And so that is why they tend to look a little bit different, if I'm not mistaken. This was a beautiful vintage aluminum tree. It was beautiful, shiny, and it didn't even have any ornaments on it. So I can imagine how beautiful it would be completely decorated. And there is the price on it, $695. Then in front of it, they had a nice hobbyist piece, a candle holder, and they had these tags on the tablecloth, but they might have been rearranging something. And so then I decided to look at the Christmas tree a little bit more. I thought it was gorgeous. As I make my way downstairs, there is a display of salt and pepper shakers. So I wanted to see what new shakers they had. They had these really cute blinking Santas. Look at that. It winks at you. I guess it would wink when you shook the salt and pepper out of him. I thought those were cute. And they had a little bit more Christmas ones out. I really liked, I'm going to tell you in a second, I have those flower salt and pepper shakers. Let's see. They had the Christmas over here. And the ones I really liked was the washer and dryer right there, those white ones. I thought that was really cute. To find Joanny's Antiques, you go downstairs, you turn to the left, and it's the last booth on the right. It's a very large booth. As you can see, it's displayed very nicely. There is a ton of things to look at. It's a little chilly, so dress accordingly. The Toll Booth Antiques doesn't have any heating, central heating or central air. So it was funny, last time um, Jocelyn and I were there, it was so hot. 
and this time it was so cold so the footage at first is a little shaky i think because i'm shivering a little bit because i did not wear a jacket so i like this plate and i really like this plate there i thought that was uh, very pretty the colors she has it displayed very nicely it's more of like things are kind of crowded together but at the same time easy to see and things will catch your eye and what's catching my eye here is this Italian set. There's a cup and then there's a tray underneath. And she wanted $30 for that. Everything is priced. Everything's real easy to see, like I said, how much things are. I really enjoyed looking at her booth. I am finding that I am partial to blue glass. I like the blue glass Ellie Smith, the blue glass anything vintage. And so this was a cute little blue glass penguin figurine. And these candle holders, I thought that was a really pretty design on them with the pink flower. And she wanted 20, oh, I keep moving it around, $25, I think, for that pair. And this was a cute little set. I think the sticker said made in Taiwan. And it was three little glass owl figurines. I thought that was so sweet. And then I brought him over to the window so you could see them a little bit clearer. And while I was over at the window, I noticed this Niels Olsen Dalla horse. And I had just listed some of these for Jocelyn. And I thought, oh, look, here's some more uh, Dalla horses. So she had that orange one. And then she had this blue one. Here I am shaking. <laughs> Maybe with excitement. I think I was shaking more with excitement that I was finding Niels Olsen horses. And then she had another one up here. That was $15. Here is an armored brass duck. And she wanted $22 for this. It was an excellent shape. And here was a Murano rooster. And that was marked at $38. And then right behind it, she had a really pretty blue glass swung vase. Not too big, not too small. Once again, I'm drawn to that blue glass. And here was some Mexico pottery. And it still had the cork, which is unusual. Usually the cork or the lid is missing. And then tucked in the back, Something blue caught my eye again, and this was an Avon Bird of Paradise jar. And that was $8 for that. This is what I would call a cashmere box. These are usually made in cashmere, India. This one had glitter on it, and it had a bird design. And that duck, that glass duck dish was cute. See how everything's nicely displayed? And then this little turtle was cute. He was more contemporary. He had a barcode underneath his price tag. So sweet. Look at that little face. And the kitty cat, of course, grabbed my attention. And that was $10, nice, good size cat. And here I'm showing you how the booth, how the shelves, sorry, the shelves are displayed. And something is going to grab my attention here shortly. What is it going to be? It is going to be the hands. Not quite praying hands, but hands nonetheless. And so that was that pair was twelve dollars. Look at that sad cow. <laughs> and I really like the graphics on this cookware. I thought the graphics made the piece. And this strawberry set. So she was selling the glasses and the pitcher. And that was $70. And then this was a different shaped plate. And when I turned it over, it was Stingle Pottery. And that is a sailfish plate.
And this area is more designed more like a bedroom or an apartment, the way she has it set up. She has this big rug hanging behind a bed. Look at that. Look at the colors. It's so pretty. Or tapestry. Hello. And I just recently sold a set of these. Mine were a greenish color. Aren't they pretty? They have a nice weight to them. Not too heavy, not too delicate that you're afraid something's going to break. She also has linens. And the Christmas tablecloth grabbed my attention because we're coming into December. And it's being sold as is because it has some stains on it. The graphics were so adorable. And then look at this lamp. Someone spent a lot of time decorating that and coming up with that. That was $95. And what really, after I looked at that, what I really thought I would want if I could get something here was this. Wouldn't that be fun to hang like from a ceiling and swing? And of course, I'm going to look at the blue glass again. I like the shape of this candy dish. And Jocelyn was waiting for me outside, so I decided to start making my way upstairs. This is at a different booth. I paused quickly to look at the paperweights. And this one was like, what, $3 for this? This is gorgeous. It has Bolacante in the middle, the controlled bubbles. So I decided to grab that. Making my way to the cashier to pay for my paperweight. This is the booth that had the Christmas tree. I wanted to stop and show you this gorgeous lamp and it had a really nice shade that matched it and then I noticed that they had this little dish with these two tiny matching dishes so these were marked at seven a piece and the bigger dish in the back was 15. I thought that was neat to see a three-piece set not just you know just the bigger piece and the smaller pieces and then there they had some Christmas trees I have two green ones and one white one. I wonder how many Christmas trees you have or if you don't collect them at all. I know they've become very popular uh, with Target and Walmart and Hobby Lobby selling them. And they also had some stands for the trees. This was a really cute pair that they were selling together. It was a left and praying angel. Isn't that cute? Both of them. You can see my paperweight. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get to the cashier, but there's, there's so many cute things to look at first. And I was just at Hobby Lobby today and they have the same shaped tree and they have a whole bunch of pom-poms glued to it. And I thought that's cute, but I kind of like this look better using the different beads on the tree. And here was another hobbyist piece. Here was a napkin holder and they were asking $20 for that. And then I went back to the trees. I thought that looked very nice. Coming up next, I'm going to show you my paperweight and some other items that I won in an online auction that I thought would be of interest. I really need to find a Lazy Susan. Someone suggested that and I've been on the hunt for one just for reasons like this. So I could spin it around and you won't have to look at my fingers and you can look at the, the piece itself. This is so pretty. The Bolacanti inside it. And this is what the bottom looks like. Here's the signature. If that signature looks familiar to you, please let me know who made it. I think this is just gorgeous. This piece was in a lot with just some kitchen items. This is the reason why I wanted to win this lot. There is a flaw to the glass. See this little kind of discoloration? It's extra glass, it seems, from the mold making but i believe this is ellie smith moon and stars these two matching ewers were in the box lot of tins i expected that there was going to be a lot of tins because they had put tins in the title of the box lot and it turns out there were only two tins and i kept one because it was older i'm going to show you that in a little bit but these are both made in india and i have a nice design all the way around them very boho feeling I like them. This original artwork was also part of the box lot. It was in the lot with the wooden figurines. 
It was painted in 1978. I think it's really pretty. I think the blue background really makes the image pop of the flowers. This Fenton bowl was in the bottom of the box lot with the tins, advertising the tins, and I was shocked that it had no chips to it. And then when I got it home, I realized the handle had been repaired on both sides. This is the before, let me show you the after. And here is the basket all cleaned up. I got most of the surface wear off of it. It certainly is cleaner. There are still some of those marks that I just couldn't get off. Here is one of the breaks and the it's in, broken in the same spot on the other side, unfortunately. It still would be nice for a display, I think. Just don't carry it around by the handle. And it does glow. I'm gonna show you here in a second. It was exciting to see. I thought, well, this was worth the drive, driving all the way down. And here is a basket, a Fenton basket in the bottom of this box lot. Even if it was broken, I was still excited to find it. These three wooden pieces were also included in the lot with the painting. And I'm kind of partial to hand carved wooden items. My grandpa used to carve wood and it always reminds me of him when I see hand carved items. These two pieces are carved by the same person. They are marked on the back. And this piece reminds me of a more made in Japan. He kind of has an Asian look to him in my opinion. It is not marked on the back. It could be American made, I'm not sure. It has a little shelf. It looks like you could put a something not breakable, but you could hang him and use his little head for a shelf unit. So I thought he had a cute little look to him. So that is the reason why I picked that lot. The last piece I wanted to highlight from the auction was this tin. It was this tin and then there was one of those big large popcorn tins. And even though I was expecting a ton of tins, I was very excited about this one. This is a made in England candy box. It is Bluebird Confectionery, Harry Vincent Limited. It does have some normal wear on the outside here, but look at the inside. It is not rusty at all. The inside is very clean and not rusty at all. So I thought that's really pretty. This is a more of a red color. Sometimes on there, that looks more accurate. Sometimes it gets a little dark in here when I video. So I thought this was very pretty. Nice. It would be cute for Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see ya.